Hi, I'm Pat Keown, a Senior Research Analyst with Lipper. I'm here to speak to you about FundFlow's activity for the week ended Wednesday, June 3rd. We'll start this week's re report by taking a quick look at the overall uh, FundFlow's results for our fund asset groups. Equity mutual funds had net outflows of $3.8 billion. Taxable bond funds and muni bond funds both took in net new money. Uh, taxable bonds at about $7.7 billion. Tax-exempt bonds at about $0.7 million. And lastly, we see money market funds, big net outflows here last week, about $30.5 billion left their coffers. Uh, we'll take a look at the, the market activity for the week now. Equity markets continue to rebound from the COVID-19-induced doldrums. The NASDAQ compo Composite Index and the S&P 500 Index each appreciated 2.9%. And the Dow Jones Industrial Average was not far behind with an increase of 2.8% for the fund flows trading week. For the second quarter to date, the NASDAQ Composite, S&P 500, and the Dow all have impressive gains of 25.8%, 20.8%, and 19.9% respectively. The NASDAQ's performance has wiped out its Q1 losses, and the index is now up 7.9% for the year to date, while the Dow and the S&P are both still in the red for the year, down 8% and 3.3% respectively. Equity markets continue to rally as investors took strength from the improving economic data and optimism that the easing of the coronavirus lockdowns will lead to an economic recovery in the second half of the year. Stocks surged on the last trading day of the week as the ADP Research Institute released data showing that 2.8 private, 2.8 million private sector jobs were lost in May. These results were well short of the 8.7 million forecast and a significant improvement from the 20.2 million jobs that were actually lost in April. Two other sets of data released by the Institute for Supply Management this week indicated that the economy may have reached its nadir as now starting on its long recovery. The group's manufacturing activity index rose to 43.1% in May, up from 41.5% in April, while its non-manufacturing activity index climbed to 45.4% from 41.8%. The non-manufacturing index reflects the services side of the economy, uh, such as re retail stores and restaurants. In general, any result below 50% for these stats points to an economy in contraction, but as they're both up from their April lows, it is a move in the right direction and investors are hopeful that these numbers will continue to climb as larger parts of the U.S. economy are opened. Let's turn our attention back now to the fund flows activity. We'll start, we'll take a look at the equity, closer look at the equity mutual fund group. As the slide shows, it was a six straight weekly net outflow for the group, $3.8 billion uh, leaving their coffers. The net outflow is relatively evenly sp split between non-domestic equity funds and domestic equity funds. Uh, on the non-domestic side, the, the peer group with the largest net outflows was international multi-cap growth funds that saw $674 million leave, while for domestic funds, it was mid-cap core funds with net outflows of just about $950 million. We'll take a look at equity ETFs now. Net outflows for this group last week as well, $798 million. Uh, see some very large net outflows among some large index products at the bottom there. Spider S&P 500 ETF, $3.8 billion in net outflows. Invesco QQQ, $1.9 billion. And the iShares MSCI EFA saw about $1.1 billion leave. Conversely, uh, on the plus side, we see the iShares Core S&P 500 ETF, net inflows of a $1 billion. And Spider Gold, which has done quite well during the, uh, the pandemic, had net inflows of just about $800 million for the week. We'll move on now. We'll start looking at our taxable bond groups. First one to take a look at is mutual funds. This group had net inflows last week. In fact, it was their eighth consecutive week of net inflows as they took in just shy of $7.7 .7 billion in net new money. Uh, the most significant increases among the peer groups belong to high yield funds and ultra short obligation funds, which took in about $2.3 billion and $1.6 billion respectively. We'll move on now to the ETF side of taxable bonds. Net inflows here again last week, uh, excuse me, net inflows as well for this group last week, $5.2 billion. This was the group's 10th straight weekly net inflow. 
Net inflows. The largest net inflows split between investment grade and high yield products, as we see the iShares, iBox, dollar, investment made, excuse me, investment grade corporate bond ETF leading the way with net inflows of $2.2 billion, followed by the iShares, iBox, dollar, high yield corporate bond ETF at $1.6 billion in net inflows. Uh, conversely, we look at the net outflows, and they're all treasury products. Uh, I took a closer look at this, uh, the, the tr different treasury peer groups we have. We saw that the short uh, the short U.S. Treasury Fund Group, which has effective maturities of between one and three years, had net outflows of $2.6 billion, while the general U.S. Treasury Peer Fund Group, which is for longer-term products, typically we see uh, effective maturities of greater, of greater than 10 years there, had net out outflows of $1.3 billion. So altogether, net outflows for Treasury ETFs last week right around $4 billion. We'll move on to our tax exempt peer group now, Muni Bond Funds. Net inflows for this group last week, it was their fourth straight week of net inflows. They took in about just shy of $700 million of net new money, uh, driven by the short Muni debt and the general Muni debt fund peer groups with net inflows of $608 million and $335 million, respectively. Our last group to take a look at is money market funds. Money market funds, large outflows next last week. They saw $30.5 billion leave their coffers. It was a third straight week of net outflows, highest net outflows for the group since the end of last year, December 2019. Uh, net outflows, the, neg the net negative flows were driven by institu two institutional peer groups, U.S. government money market funds and U.S. Treasury money market funds saw 18 billion, excuse me, 18.2 billion and 14.9 billion dollars leave their coffers respectively. Well, that wraps up this week's report. If you'd like to take a closer look for the, at the data for yourself, please go to our website. It's www.lipperusfundflows.com. And please join us here again next week where another one of our analysts will be, will be speaking about that week's fund flows activity.